how can we continue? What is the next view we need? Well, we can move on to a peristernal short axis view. Why a peristernal short axis view? Well, with the peristernal short axis view, you can really differentiate if there are three cusps. The right coronary cusp, always pointing towards the right ventricle. The left coronary cusp, pointing towards the left atrium. The non or a coronary cusp, pointing towards the interatrial septum. So if you have those three cusps, you can visualize if there is a normal opening present. Here's an example, and you can also take a look at the compact echo course for the peristernal short axis view. For this, here you see the aortic valve with a normal opening. The leaflet or the cusps, they are normal. The surface seen over here is smooth. And there are three, so the right coronary cusp pointing towards the right ventricle, or the RVOT, the left coronary cusp towards the left atrium, and the non-coronary cusp towards the interatrial septum. When you see something like this, then you are definitely sure the opening of the aortic valve is still normal, so it opens quite fine, quite nicely, but there's a difference in the morphology. So this is a tricuspid valve, so the aortic valve is normally tricuspid and here you only have two cusps. So there's one missing. This is a so-called bicuspid aortic valve, but very important, look at the opening and the closure, so systole and diastole. Also in the peristernal short axis view, include a focus view of the aortic valve where you see all the three cusps again, where you can appreciate that the Cusps per se are here, they are sclerotic, so there is a little bit of calcification, but overall the opening is preserved. So this is definitely or most likely not a severe aortic stenosis because the opening seems preserved. When we take a look now at Erna's case, well, here in the short axis view, it's very hard that you differentiate individual cusps because it's simply just severely calcified. There is probably a little bit of opening left. And if you do not have an optimal view from the peristernal short axis, you can also choose a view from a subcoastal approach. This is a subcoastal short axis. How do you achieve that view? Well, when you have a four chamber view where the marker points to the left side of the patient in a subcoastal approach, you simply rotate the transducer and tilt it upwards like you would in a peristernal approach to see the same structure. So here's the aortic valve, here's the interatrial septum, tricuspid valve, right ventricle RVOT, and also here you can nicely see that the valve is severely calcified. Even the calcifications block our field of view in the far field. So this is truly a severely calcified aortic valve. Here's just another example where you see the opening and the closure in the peristernal long axis, how it has to be. So this is distinctly different from what we have seen with our patient Erna. So the normal opening looks like this. So opening in systole and closure in diastole. Moving on to the first Doppler measurement, we need besides color Doppler, we need the continuous wave Doppler. We need a five chamber view and we need the continuous wave Doppler at the maximum velocity of the aortic valve. There are some tips and tricks you can utilize to make this easier for you. So first of all, use color Doppler as a guidance. So if you have color Doppler here, you see where is the maximal velocity and where is the region where I have to place the continuous wave Doppler. And if you do that, you can see that there is a signal which exceeds the four meters, which would be a severe stenosis by almost two meters. So we are here at a range of six meters per second. But if you do not have the optimal signal, and this looks entirely different, you have a less strong signal. And this by far doesn't reach the six meters. Still, in this case, it would be around four meters. So probably still a severe aortic stenosis. If you do not have the optimal angle or the optimal position of the continuous wave Doppler, you will miss a lot of information. So always try to optimize the image. The second tip is if you simply move the transducer laterally and tilt the beam inward, the aortic valve will move like a focused right ventricular view towards an optimal alignment of the continuous wave Doppler. Like this, you can even optimize the signal. 
So the continuous wave Doppler, of course, is a Doppler measurement. It's angle dependent. So if you're off, it leads to underestimation. As mentioned, you can move lateral and tilt inwards to have a better signal because a good angle equals a good Doppler signal. And in case of, for example, atrial fibrillation, you need repeated measurements to actually display the true velocity of the aortic valve. So in this case, we have a sinus rhythm. And what you can see is this signal is a bit weaker compared to the other two signals. So the most optimal signal is here probably the third one, where you see it's very dense. So this is what you want in an optimal measurement of continuous wave Doppler in the aortic valve.